So I hear the term premium, mm -hmm. and I feel like that that's a name that's thrown around by a lot of car companies. Yeah. Give me three specific attributes that mean premium. Three, uh, ride, handling, and steering. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, you haven't been I thinking think about this at all. No, not at all. Yeah. For, for us, it's, uh, I think we, we want to distinguish ourselves and be, be unique in the way we do it. So for us, it's not a question of premium or non-premium. It's our finding our own identity. And, and the way we do that is, is that we, we focus on uh, not necessarily Nürburgring lap times, mm -hmm. but just confidence in the driving experience. And that's, that's what I wanted to ask your readers later on. How do okay. they feel when they drive our new cars? Okay. Because we want the cars to make them feel like we throw anything at it. You know, any driving situation, any environment, uh, and the car will tell you, I, I can handle this. I'm, I'm built and tested to handle this. Okay, we'll ask that question later, but mm -hmm. how do you design in confidence in, into driving? That's that's the whole platform idea. And it's part of it is having a lot of grip in the front axle so that you have what we call a linear response feel. So if you have if you have a, if you're entering a corner for instance and you, you, s you settle into the corner and you want to adjust the path, then you have from turning in you have a model of how much steering you need to dial in to get that to that path. And then if, if you suddenly have a differing path and you need to adjust, you want that adjustment to match the model you have in your head. That's when the car is very predictable and controllable. Mm -hmm. And we get that from our dual uh, link arm front suspension because it's very linear and it builds a lot of grip. So not only do we have a lot of capacity to really turn the car when you need it, but it's also linear so you know how much you dial in and you feel that as a driver. Do you focus on the front axle because this is designed as a transverse platform or is it, let's say for the sake of discussion, Volvo one day decided they wanted to do rear drive cars again? No, I think uh, for, for us we had, um, and I just started with a front axle. We have yeah. a rear axle as well. That's very much improved. Yeah. And, and one of the things that, that we need and I think is, is characteristic for a well handling car is that the front and rear axle needs needs to communicate well together and what i mean with that is that they have a, we've built in what we call a uh, a roll center migration that matches front and rear so when you turn the the steering wheel and the car rolls it rolls equally over the front and rear axle mm -hmm. and that way you you won't pitch or, or nose dive as you turn pitch, squat dive rolls, yeah and that gives on. you much more confidence as well you mm -hmm. turn and you roll and that just feels right and natural for the driver that brings up two points. You, you, number one, do you is it just you guys that are doing this kind of testing, or do you bring in like the the the, the, the people who buy a Volvo and drive them in northern New Jersey? Do you see how uh, they react to it? Yeah, we uh, we do a lot of customer research. Mm -hmm. We do. Uh, it's difficult sometimes behind because the wheel. Customer research. Yeah, no, I I don't do you don't, that. You don't much. put them in the car. You just talk to them. About yeah, it. exactly. Okay. Uh, but it's I, I think you're right. Going with someone in the car is very very good. Yeah. Because then you you see what they feel, and uh, and you can talk about the exact same experience. So that is very helpful. The second thing, and I think this is a newer challenge you have now. You just brought up a very good point to have communication between the front and the rear axle. Mm -hmm. But you have a plat. This car behind us is all-wheel drive, yep. but there is no mechanical connection between the front and the rear. Oh, no. How do you have them communicate? There is, in, in the T6. No, in no, the, in the, the T8. T8. This oh, is this, a T8. this is a T8. Well, this then you're T8. right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look at yeah. the badge. Like, I think it's, a, put aside, okay, put aside that I'm a geek about this kind of stuff, yeah. I just think it's so cool mm -hmm. that they don't connect, yeah. yet it's all-wheel drive. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how you work this off, but how do you get them to communicate? That's, it, it takes a lot of work uh, because you can, the car can switch, yeah, and it's, since it can be, it can be a front wheel drive, almost only front, front wheel drive, it can be a pure rear wheel drive and it, it can be an all wheel drive. So that's an interesting challenge for us is to make that car feel consistent so that it always feels the same. Do you do that or do software engineers do that communication? We do, we do, uh, we do the tuning of it and okay. then there's functions that are developed by software engineers, but we do tune it with the parameters so, so that it feels right. So you can tune it software-wise, much like you turn to an e-pass nowadays. Exactly, yeah. So it's kind of the same thing. Kind of the same thing, yeah. Fascinating. Or exactly the same thing. Exa okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then, let's let's press on now. You, you had this opportunity, because yeah. you started in 2006, and you have this great vantage point of seeing really two different Volvos. Mm -hmm. So what was, when you sat down, 
uh, with the engineers that were working on this this, this platform. Yeah. What did what did you bring to the table? What did you want to walk away from that table with? That that was the uh, what we started with was what I was talking about was that we realized that for our customers to want to spend extra money on, on a car that gives them a nice driving experience, yeah. it's the confidence feel. That, mm. That's what we really wanted. And we could break that down into the specific suspension systems that we have now. Yeah. And it was, uh, it's grip, and it's the, uh, the motions, and it's the increased comfort that we get from the rear axle as well. Yeah. So if, if you have, for instance, let's say you could have a uh, l less complicated uh, suspension systems, and you could find the handling and confidence you need by just tightening it up. Yeah. But then you'd lose the ride comfort. Now let's 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 switch gears a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you worked on the 90 cluster, didn't you? Yeah. And what were you looking for in terms of attributes there? Yeah. It's the difference between the 90s and 60s. We think is the 90 is more relaxed, whereas the 60 is more inspired. Mm -hmm. So we want we want the 60 to be a bit more engaged, a bit tighter and more dynamic, mm -hmm. whereas the 90 is. A little bit more isolated, more relaxed. So you got, just to kind of recap from the episodes, the the components are the same between yeah. between the two cars. Yeah. What are some of the differences you made in terms of specifics between a 90 and a 60 cluster suspension system? Well, it's it's a slightly narrower track width. Mm -hmm. uh, the steering is tuned differently. The dampers are tuned differently as well. We have a sport chassis on the XC60 that we don't have on the XC90, for instance, mm -hmm. with about 30% stiffer springs and still with a nice and smooth ride. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it, we've tuned pretty much everything in the vehicle dynamics mm -hmm. component list that we can. So those are the changes in the actual suspension pieces that hang off the structure. Yeah. Besides the actual length, did yeah. you make any differences to the structure? Yeah, uh, that's one thing. Uh, is the platform itself is so scalable that it, we, we don't have to do that. And it's, uh, it's just a, for us, the structure is, is just magically moving. So it's on. like an accordion. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Not when you drive, though, <laughs> platform-wise. <laughs> but one thing that happens too with these suspension systems is that we we stretch the wheelbase a lot compared to the length of the car. Mm -hmm. So the car, uh, compared to the old car, has grown about 40 millimeters, but the wheelbase itself has grown more than 100 millimeters. So that gives us a much nicer wheelbase to length ratio and you know you want to push the wheels far out in the corners of a car to get good handling mm -hmm. so that has helped us as well so i don't know if you've seen some of my episodes on 90 cluster cars but one of my favorite setups is the r design yeah it's got these cool looking wheels man it's mm -hmm. really cool looking is there something you did different besides the wheels the cooler seats and an r design to make that um more sporty, more dynamic, as you say. Because yeah. I notice you're using the term dynamic, not so much sporty. Yeah, yeah, we do. But uh, but for us, uh, I mean, the dynamic feel is, is the same, almost the same as the confidence. If a car is dynamically well sorted, it'll give you confidence to drive. We, we, uh, we tighten it up. So the springs, as I said, are about 30% stiffer. Mm -hmm. uh, we oh, have 30%? A, yeah, so it's a quite That's a big quite step. That's quite a step, yeah. yeah. So you can go for a drive and tell me what you think. You know what, I've, I've driven an, uh, an XC90R design and, I, mm -hmm. and, and uh, I think a V90R design. The XC90R design, has. we don't differ the chassis there. We also, uh, we equip the car with monotube dampers uh, in the R design uh, compared to the twin tubes in the uh, in the standard. So they're a little bit quicker in the response. Now that what's gives you the... A bit Benef what's like the actual difference in the structure of them? It's it's one one well it's one piston. Yeah. <laughs> it's always one piston. But the monotube is, is one it, it goes one way basically. Yeah. So you have a faster response in the fluid. Uh, and that means when you when you tune it, it's uh, you just it catches everything a little bit quicker. Yeah. Uh, and, and that means the steering response is a bit higher and so on. You you could do the same thing in a in a twin tube as well, but this the monotube is it's just that little bit faster in the response. So the speed is what you're yeah, looking for. Yeah. Okay, so now let's let's turn this around. Mm -hmm. You wanted to leave a question for the audience and you'd like, you bow, you jumped into this whole discussion with, there's any question I have for the audience. Yeah. What is the question that you want to share with the audience? I want to know exactly how you feel when you drive the car. I want, I want to know how the car makes you feel and in terms of... A Volvo or any car? The Volvo, especially the new Volvos, okay. the spa cars, because we want the driving experience to make you feel confident, uh, to, to just empower you with confidence when you drive. And that's what I want to know if you feel. And if not, why not? Okay. Let me know.
And you really, you came in here with this quote. <laughs> okay, just a little behind the scenes. I prepped him for this. But last night we talked about this, and he really went home and did his homework. <laughs> Thank you for that. So you guys need to answer the man's question here. And, and as he, he actually stole a line from me, not just the yes or no or how it makes you feel, but why or why not? Like, yeah. what specifics? So you're looking for a little book and verse from these guys. Yes, yeah, yeah, okay. please. Until we see you guys next time, bishop Thank you.